Each week, American History TV's American Artifacts takes you to museums, archives, and historic places. The Amelia Earhart Collections at Purdue University houses the world's largest assemblage of papers related to the American aviation pioneer. Archivist Sammy Morris, who heads Purdue's Special Collections Division, shows us selected items from the Earhart Collection, including poems and letters she wrote to her family, as well as a prenuptial letter Earhart gave to husband and manager George Putnam on their wedding day. Amelia Earhart worked in West Lafayette for the last two years of her life as she prepared for a solo around-the-world flight funded by Purdue. It was during this flight that Earhart disappeared in 1937. From an airplane, even the watchful purple hills that hold the lake could not see so well as I the stain of evening creeping from its heart, nor the round yellow eyes of the hamlet growing filmy with mists. She would have been about 23 whenever she was writing these, but you can see that she has kind of a romanticized view of the height, um, being able to see nature below her. And so when she became um, an aviation editor for Cosmopolitan magazine, she also would write a lot about the beauty of flying and how she loved things like just seeing the clouds up there and sort of the serenity of being um, on her own above things and being able to look at the beauty below. So Amelia Earhart was an early woman pilot at a time when many women did not have careers outside of the home. And she's most well remembered today for having disappeared. Um, it's still a mystery what happened to her. But I think she's also remembered because she was such a pioneer for women's rights and for women's education and careers. Um, equality of the sexes was very important to her as well as promoting aviation as a legitimate travel option. Um, many people were afraid to fly at that time. But it wasn't until around 1920 when she started really thinking seriously about taking flying lessons. And she had to convince her family because not only was it dangerous, it was expensive and they really didn't have the money to allow her to do that. So she started um, taking jobs so that she could pay for her own lessons. One of the requirements her father had was that she take lessons from a woman pilot, which took her a little bit longer to locate a woman pilot who would give her instruction. But eventually she found Nita Snook and Nita was the first one to take her up in plane and really start to teach her. What's interesting is if you read things from Nita's perspective, Amelia was horrible because she, she would daydream up in the air. She was loving the beauty and the height and the excitement and she wasn't paying attention to the technical things she needed to know should something go wrong with the plane. 